September 9. You know what that means. That means it's SketchUp la, 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 Live Day with Aaron. You see him right up front, right up close and personal. He's got a, looks like some, uh, some walls in the background. We're going to put a roof on that thing. We're going to build some truss. We're going to put them into a roof. And Aaron's going to do it all in SketchUp. You are tuned into the right place. We got a bunch of people in the chat. Thanks for joining live. And hey, let's kick this show on the road. Here's your host, Aaron Deason. Thank you, Matt. You know, <laughs> in case you didn't know, I'm Aaron and that was Matt. And uh, Matt, I, Matt just sets this, this level, this energy level that I feel compelled to carry on. And it's not always easy. I, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I feel like I got to shoot for like, I don't know, 60% of what Matt has. And then I'll be good. I can't go higher than that because I'll burn out after about 20 minutes. So yeah, no, you got to bring, Whoa. bring the heat up top. <laughs> Get it started. You got to get our oh. us off on the right foot. That's right. So, uh... All right. Yes. Yeah, so it is Friday. We're going to model live in SketchUp. We are going to model some truss framing. So we're going to hop in this little house I got back here. We're going to go in there and just model everything that's in a truss roof. We'll throw it all on there. So it's going to be fun. Uh, we're going to do it in just a moment here. Before that, I felt compelled to call something to your attention. So if we take a look over here, not there, don't look away. <laughs> here, <laughs> we have a video by our buddy, Justin Geis over at the SketchUp Essentials. Absolutely, I'm not sure, every once in a while he's on here. So if you're here, Justin, let yourself be known. But I, I so we've had this kind of friendly competition going on, Justin, has a channel he runs solo by himself he's the only one working on it and he's been doing his best to get more subscribers than we have i don't do this by myself it's not just me it's not just me and matt we actually have a full team and the support of a company that makes our youtube channel happen justin on the other hand does his solo it's just oh hey there he is it's just this guy right here uh in this about to be what an amazing looking hat that is so <laughs> all the air and swag you could possibly get his hands on but this guy if you don't already subscribe to him on youtube you should he's he's definitely a channel if you're watching us you should also be watching him uh and just to throw it out too he does have his own website the sketchup essentials.com uh, and he has tutorials in, up there. He's got information. You can subscribe to his channel or to his website, get information and learning. Uh, great way to learn SketchUp. And like I said, I highly, highly recommend joining his stuff if you're enjoying anything that we do. It's like what we do here, but Justin's like better. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he's way better. He's got uh, he's got everything covered. He's got the uh, the extensions covered. He's got the rendering stuff covered. He's got all the SketchUp stuff on the YouTube channel and on his website. And he is, uh, yeah, super cool guy and a lot yeah. of great info. So definitely 100% agree. Check him out. Yeah. And uh, he keeps, uh, you know, Aaron going on the side with all his T-shirt <laughs> and hat uh, purchases, which is nice. But also shilling for your book. I, Taking SketchUp Pro to the next level, which is your book that's coming out soon. You can pre-order now on Amazon. Is that right? That is correct. He's, I always I always feel kind of bad, like, propping up my own stuff, but I'll let Justin do it for me. So, yeah, got, <laughs> got a book coming up in about two weeks, three weeks from now. Uh, it will be shipping. It is Taking SketchUp Pro to the next level. It is aimed at if you're already a beginner, you've done the fundamentals training, and you want to go next level, check it out. It's a good book, I think. My editor liked it. I liked it. So, you know, we got that going for us, but uh, yeah, could be, could be, could be helpful. That's right. I read it, but I assume it will probably be good. It's, it's solidly. All right. In my opinion, I'm a harsh critic. Uh, no, but it's good. It'll be a good training, a good piece of training to have. So yeah, had to give, had to give, uh, Justin a quick shout out. Uh, it's, I mean, we're, we're playing this off as like a competition. It's a lot of fun, but he, he has done a great job at his channel. I highly recommend checking out the SketchUp Essentials. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I stepped on the plug. <laughs> okay. So rewind a little bit. Little, 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 and you can find Justin at YouTube, the SketchUp Essentials, or the SketchUp Essentials.com. With that, oh, you can. there we go. 
<laughs> we can hop in and do some modeling. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. A lot of air horn today. I don't know what. I like it. What's gotten into like the it. system? But I, I, I feel like I'm at a at a game or something. Big, lots of good stuff happening. It's, it's big. Yeah. Ooh, a All lot right. Of sports going on. A lot of there's a lot of news. I can't wait to get to it. I know you want to intro <laughs> the, uh, the actual model today, but hey, yesterday was a heck of a day. A lot of stuff going. On yeah, somewhere. you'll have to so suffer through time. a few minutes of talking about what we're going to do, and then we'll get on with the important stuff. What's on Amazon Live? What's what's uh, yeah? What's your favorite Netflix show? What's going on Disney Plus? And uh, yeah, what happened in various other countries? All right, so. I threw together some walls, super simple, super simple here. Uh, I did make one, just one big group right here. I have, this is about 20 feet, I think exactly 20 feet. This way is 40 feet. Down here we have a section that is also 20 by 10. Over here we have a little span of 12 and that goes back also 10 feet. So it's just simple roof. What I wanna put on here is I wanna just, I'm gonna worry about framing. That's it. We're just going to go. We're going to put on trusses. Uh, this is what I used to do for a living before I was lucky enough to start working here at Trimble. Uh, talking about SketchUp, I actually ran a truss design department for a company. It was an architectural engineering software company, but we also had a design uh, department and the owner of the company also owned a uh, trust company. So we actually did both bids and production work for trust roofs. He's got and, the background in it, folks. And we did Watch it in the Rocky out. Mountains. I mean, that's big, heavy loads, lots of snow, and big, crazy, you know, cantilevers and high slopes. And it's, yeah, if you're gonna do trusses and you want, you want to really learn to do some, everything you can, the Rocky Mountains is, is, are the place to do that, so. Got all the variables there. And I'm surprised it's taking you this long to uh, <laughs> do a live model on this kind of thing, seeing as you have so much experience in it. You know, I, I think I, I did a thing where uh, I spent too much time doing it, didn't want to get into it for a while. And then by the time I felt like that wasn't the case anymore, I was too far away from it and thought I really didn't know how to do it anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm hoping it's like riding a bike. I hope this comes back to me. I, I mean, you guys know, I try not to, to over prepare for these things. So we're going to wing this. It's going to be good. Nice. It's got to be. It's going to be cool seeing you taking a dip into nostalgia, but also retreading some some old brain, uh, you know, activity, some neuron connections that haven't been That's fired right. in a while. <laughs> That's right. All right. So I'm going to hop in here and we're gonna, I'm going to start with just some basic geometry. We're going to put a truss together. I want to show you guys how I go about modeling this. So I do want a, a disclaimer up front. If there's anybody here who is interested in this, I do want to put this out there. Um, this is kind of a layout for maybe just preliminary design reasons. Maybe this is just, uh, uh, you know, for a marketing type of material. If you are in any kind of home design, anything like that, and you work with a truss manufacturer, the truss manufacturer who bears all the responsibility for the actual trusses once they're built and put on the house is the one who will do the design work. And they probably won't do it in SketchUp. They're gonna have a proprietary engineering software that they use for everything, and that's what's actually gonna get it done. So don't take this as being me saying, here's how you should do truss design in SketchUp and use this as your actual engineering tool. That's not where I'm going with this. This is like, I wanna just get some trusses on here, look at it, or maybe I wanna do preliminary design to find out like, where do I have to put load bearing members? How do I do that sort of thing? Get some pretty pictures for some, some uh, renders or architectural drawings. That's kind of what we're aiming at. Just wanted to properly disclaim that so nobody's like, oh, I use my tech software, I'll never use that. That's cool. You're good. Yeah, that's good context to have. Yeah. Just, um, there are also some people in the chat saying that uh, our audio levels are a little bit different as you enjoy your kombucha there, uh, how you're a little bit higher than I am. I turned my mic up a little bit so folks can hear me better. Let me know. Um, if not, I don't know. All right. Maybe I have to fiddle with it, but uh, oh, we, yeah. Would, Hold on. I've been having the audio issues over here. Thought we, you, you know, you think you have everything smoothed out, ironed out. And then, um, you know, you get to the actual show biz and uh, it's not it's not working. So Aaron's pulling his down a little bit. He's going to do some testing and he's going to come right back up. And we're going to get this. A little better. Yeah, we're going to get that nice evened out uh, audio levels there to make sure that you guys can not only hear 
uh, Aaron, of course, who's presenting, but me, who is on the horn behind the scenes. And thanks, Jeff, for the feedback there. Awesome. Um, but yeah, we should be back and up and up and running. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I, I did forget, uh, Matt, you know, I did, we did some recording with some uh, presenter who is not myself, who's more soft spoken. And I forgot that I did turn that up a little bit. So I think we should be back where we should be. Awesome. Okay, let's hop in. Let's do this thing. So uh, I want to start with just a simple trust. We're just going to go in and put some geometry and you guys can see how I think about and go about this. I'm just going to do a truss right here on the end just to put the geometry together. So I'm going to start with a line. I do a lot of drawing edges as opposed to drawing rectangles. That's just something that I do. Uh, not something you have to do. If you like feel good about that, then go for it. I'm going to make my truss uh, I'm going to put a two by six top cord, so five, or sorry, two by six bottom cord, so two and a half, or hold on. Numbers. Numbers are important and sometimes difficult. I'm going to put a two by six bottom cord, so five and a half inch bottom cord, and then a two by four top cord, so three and a half inches on top. Just to show some different materials, really, is the, the big thing here. So I drew a line across. I'm going to come up 5.5, enter. I'm gonna drag that all the way down here. And okay, simple rectangle. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna push it through 1.5. Now, I'm gonna grab this and make it a group. All right, gonna cut this, just, just head this question off. Why is that a group and not a component? I'm gonna use this as basic geometry to go through and start creating all of my other pieces in this truss. If I make it a component, I'm immediately gonna be going, make unique, next one, make unique, next one, make unique, and I'm gonna be constantly making unique. I'm gonna keep it as a group, and after I create frame the whole truss, I can at that point, if there's a reason to, go back, right click on the groups, and make those into components. By making it a component first, I end up creating a lot more work for myself where I have to go through and keep track of each piece. I would rather come back afterwards and figure out if I need that as a component or not. So it's everything's so easier. That's right. Easy. Easy is good. Easy right. is the way to go. So I have my bottom cord here. Oh, the other thing I'm not going to do, I'm not going to paint it. I'm not going to paint anything. This would be a white model. <gasps> yeah. So deal with that. <laughs> what kind of material is this? Porcelain? <laughs> That's right. It's my, my white glass house. All right, so I'm going to take that. I'm going to slide a copy up, and I'm going to go into it, and I'm push this top down by two inches. Again, groups, not really concerned about much else. Now i got a 2 by 6 and a 2 by 4 floating above it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top cord, I'm going to find the angle it goes at, and then figure out where it sits relative to this bottom cord. So uh, I seem to remember I can go like this, start to rotate, and then type 6 colon 12 and enter, and that will give me a 612 pitch. That was actually something I did not know about. I learned that from comments in a video I made. Wow. Yeah. I should probably just shut it down now. We've peaked. It's all downhill from here. I do feel like there's a lot of those little uh, those little things with the measurements box that definitely make sense that they're in there, but it's just like you never... Yeah. You know, and once you use it, it's like, oh, dang, I'm going to be using this all the time. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now I'm going to take this, this piece right here, and I'm going to come lap it down over the bottom cord. So on the bottom cord, you know, the bottom cord is going to get cut at a slope that matches this one right here. I'm not gonna do it right now because I'll, I'll actually inference the actual thing, but it's gonna get cut like that. When a bottom cord gets cut, it doesn't actually cut all the way down to the end. There's a thing called a butt cut, which is, cut. that's right. This is a, this is a term Matt, Matt recently learned. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, we, should, we, should, we, the... should we take a break and give props to the number of trust terms Matt crammed into a 30 second video? I mean, <laughs> Whew. Yeah, if you saw the little trailer thing before, I did not know any of those words beforehand. I knew that there was like funky words that <laughs> that have to do with trust. So I definitely had the tab open with all the 
you know, the diagrams with all the different names and butt cut certainly stood out. But uh, yeah, no, I takes a lot of work to, uh, you know, copy paste different names and try to figure out how to <laughs> say them all really fast. But it was um, very well done. So if you have any trust related, I already saw a couple uh, in Aaron, we trust uh, puns in there in the chat. So if you have any other ones, please drop them. That's right. That's right. Bring them on. Trust puns, framing puns, building puns, whatever you got, we'll take them. Um, all right. So I'm going to establish that butt cut by drawing a line up a quarter inch, which the, like I said, the, the, the shop I designed for was, we always did a quarter inch butt cut. And now I'm going to take this piece that I put at 612 and I'm going to drop it down to right there. I don't actually need this geometry more so there there's so that will be the final cut on my my bottom cord right here the top cord is going to extend out for an overhang so overhangs uh i don't so I, I i mean i could come in here and just say okay extend it so long i, I could do that in fact i'll just do that i'm going to grab it so long run it out <laughs> like that the generally speaking an overhang is measured horizontally from the face of the house. So if I have a 12 inch overhang, that's actually 12. That is where the overhang ends. So it's not, I say this because it's not 12 inches of overhang. So this dimension right here, see is one, one and seven sixteenths. It's actually 12 inches measured out horizontally. So Pythagoras. that's right. There's some math there, but I don't know how to do that math. That math exists. I've always designed with computers. So there's some math I totally shortcut. Uh, Can you so, type in a, a square root in the measurements box? <laughs> I don't know how to do a superscript too. So but no, probably not. <laughs> so, so what I'll do here is I'll come in and I will at this point just chop it off. And this is, this is a thing too, depending on the type of finish of your structure, you may have a square cut like this. You may have a vertical cut where this is actually cut down like that and matches it. Uh, that, that all depends on the, the architecture of the building, how are those going to actually cut. I'm just going to square cut everything on this one. All right, so that gives us the start of where our bottom cord will be and our top cord. I'm going to go ahead and cut the top cord. I'm just going to put a line straight up the middle like this, come into this guy, push that through like that. All right, and we have our top cord at that point is finished. Um, I'll go ahead and just chop this off right here too. Chop it. Um, right. Lenny asked if the trailer is going to be on the replay video. No, uh, only up beforehand. Part of the fun, you know, everything these days is all on demand, but uh, hey, sometimes it's nice to just have something only exists for a short amount of time. Studio RT, right. cool. Did you get gang nail plate uh, as a pun in the trailer? I didn't, I missed it. So if you can think of a pun for that, Knock it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jeff was asking about, could you use solid tools and subtract for that cut that you had to make in that group? You could, but let me just throw this back up here. See, can you see what the problem will be if I use solid tools here? What happens is I subtract this from this and I have this little chunk left over. So I have to go in and delete that geometry out anyhow. So for me, it's always been easiest just to go draw a line, push, pull, I mean, that, that you can save that be... and use it for a doorstop, though. That's, oh, yeah, that's true. One of the problems with solid tools is when you go and break geometry, so you break one piece into two pieces separated by a space, that's still one piece. So it doesn't break it and go, okay, that creates a solid here and a separate solid over here. So you could make a doorstop with it, but what you'd have to do is go in, triple click, make it its own group, cut it, leave the context, and paste it out on its own. So uh, because the way solid tools works, I don't use it that often. For me, it's a lot quicker to just trace the cords and, and cut stuff. So good question, though. Um, uh, Luis, as far as I know, this is the easy way. I try, <laughs> I try not to go in and show you the hardest way to do things in general. Um, so, so far, I mean, it's all native tools. It's all fairly simple. I'm going to try to impart the trust design information I have, but if you have no idea what a trust is or how to work, it might be a tough, tough chunk to bite off there. So, um, yeah, totally. Um, we also had a question. 
about using extensions. Um, I don't think you're going to be, you don't plan on using any extensions for this model, is that correct? Right. I won't for this one, but there are some good trust extensions out there. Medica is the one that pops to head immediately. Um, I'm not sure if Framer does trusses too, uh, but there are ones out there that, that are worth checking out. If you do a lot of this, then check it out for sure. Um, you, it's still good to know how to go through and edit your geometry, but uh, yeah, there are some options. I am not super familiar with them. I know they exist and I've seen them and played with some of them, but I have never used any for production. All right, I'm going to take this top cord. I'm going to use rotate. Oh, my buddy rotate. I'm going to stay on a flat. So I'm going to stay on blue. I'm going to hit my up arrow to lock that, that inference in. And I'm going to go to the top, the middle of this top piece right here. And I'm going to option rotate a copy around like that. That's going to give us both our top cords. So this geometry right here is going to be reusable in multiple trusses. So we'll, we'll be using this geometry quite a bit. Um, I'll come down here. I'll go ahead and knock that out. All right, so there we go. So now I have that. So these three pieces, this may be what I use to create uh, the gable end that's going to go on here, the main truss that runs along here. Uh, over here, I'm going to have one maybe right here that's a truss girder. I may use that same geometry. So this, this right here might get used and reused quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and grab that as it is right now and make it into a... No, actually, I'm not going to do that yet. There's some different options here which you might want to make components. I'm going to make each individual truss standalone its own component, so I might uh, not do that yet. All right, so one of the things that happens as you design things is stuff changes sizes. Uh, again, keeping this as simple as possible, if I wanted to knock this down into a 2x4 bottom cord as opposed to 2x6, I always come in here, shove this down too and then just chop off my extra like that. Uh, and then there you go. I don't know why, I'm, like I said, I'm making some stuff up here, but I just feel like that is a thing that happens a lot is material changes sizes. It's just SketchUp geometry is the thing I gotta remember. Yeah. Um, we had a first call. Lawrence in the chat says oh, too. Shame. Excellent idea. Oh, I already saved it once. That's why it didn't prompt me. I was waiting. I was waiting for the, like, mm. I was like, should I interject here? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's happening. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go ahead. And so, like I said, this geometry is going to get used and used again. But let's go ahead and we'll make this a gable truss. The gable truss is the piece that sits on the edge. It sits flush with the exterior wall. So when they put sheathing up the wall, it continues. Or I can, I can go like this. I can weatherman this thing. It's going to continue up the wall, up the truss. So what we want to make sure we do is put vertical. Down the East Coast. Yeah, that's right. You're going to have some warm weather moving in. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a vertical member right here that's just going to run right there. And then we'll just put it two foot on center all the way out to the ends. I could do this a couple different ways. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just grab this guy right here. I'm going to rotate a copy vertical. All right. And then I'm just going to draw a line like this, which will allow me to grab it by the center and put that center piece right there. There we go. And because they'll all have the same bottom, I'll go ahead and just chop this off right here. Again, groups, just dealing with groups right now. I, I don't want to mess with having to, to mess around with anything else right this second. Um, I'll just go ahead and chop this off here too. This is probably an extra step, but it looks nicer. Now what I'll do is I'll take that one, option copy it this way, 24, and I'll say do that for X. All right, and I'll just do the same thing. I'll just grab this one, option copy this direction, 24, for X. There we go. So somebody was asking about solid groups. So if I go to view, tool palettes, turn on solid tools, I could grab this as my cutter and say, uh, where is it? Oh, th these icons are so teeny. Uh, <laughs> trim this guy. And I can, I can work my way up and I can really hit it pretty quick. But the downside to this is, this is what I was talking about. You can see 
this got cut out, but now I have to go into each one and I have to, you know, whoops, triple click, delete, triple click, delete. Mm -hmm. So this is why for me, it's, it was just always seemed quicker to go click, line, push, pull, done. I, there's some stuff I've, I've played around with like making cutting masses. So like everything that's outside of the roof, make that a big mass and then chop stuff off. But when I end up making cutters, I feel like I'm wasting more time than I could just go in and knock this stuff out. So I tend to not do that a whole lot. I tend to try to, to uh, keep it as simple as possible. And here's the other thing that doesn't work then. This guy right here, this is intersected by two separate solids. So I would have to do two intersections, one to cut off here, one to cut off here, or I could come in and go click, 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 and then just push pull it back and be done. So in my opinion, that was that's quicker and easier. All right, at this point, I'm gonna grab all of this. I'm going to make it a component, and I'm gonna say 20 foot gable truss. And you can call it whatever you want. Is this G01 or TG5, whatever. I don't you know, whatever you want to call it. I am going to set my component axis right here to the heel rather than the end of the overhang, because if I place this, that's where I'd want to place it from. Good call. And so the RT cool says Medique has a nice solid trim tool. Oh, that could work too. So something to check out. A uh, couple of people in the chat here. Ove said, back when you were talking about saving, Sean Connery would have said, to shave. Um, so, I don't know. <laughs> you might have to take a minute and uh, get some shaving cream out. I guess so. The razor? Wasn't planning on shaving today. Let's see. All right. um, Jeff said to make a drop gable truss. I don't know what that is. Um, totally possible. Uh, it, would, it would be, so in some cases, what you'll do is you'll take the top cords of the truss and put them down so that you can have a horizontal overhang that runs over the top. Depending on how big the overhang here is, depending on the building code, depending on the load, whatever else, your overhang might be something that's like a little ladder that's just nailed on the side and then held together with the sheathing. If it's a bigger load or a longer overhang, you might have to drop this down and then run members perpendicular over the top. That's absolutely something we can do if we have time. Uh, I think that's, uh, it's, it's worth doing. It's pretty simple. So, uh, or it's kind of repetitive, but so let me get the regular trusses in here and we'll, we'll see what we got time for. Cool. That sounds great. And then I uh, just want to say hi to some people in the chat. We'll run through some highs real quick. Please do. Namaste. I'm guessing. Welcome back. Bonjour. How are you doing? Hello. 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 Hey. Hello, sailor. What's up? Okay. Vamos. Let's go. <laughs> two of those, two of those I recognize from my uh, working with the shop days. Hey, being the big one. <laughs> Get over here. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to go into this guy right here. It is still a component. So one thing I want to make sure I do, I should probably have this entity info open at all times. This is a reminder that that's a component. Um, I'm going to make it unique. When I make it unique, it disconnects that, that copy from all the other copies. And I can come over here and just say, this is a 20 foot truss. This will just be my standard truss. I'm gonna go ahead and double click to enter it, hide everything that's outside of that component. And now I can come in and I can kind of get rid of these vertical members. What I'll be using instead is we'll just go in and put in regular webs. Now there's a couple things you can do here. Uh, if, if you're just drawing something that looks like webs, then, you know, I could take this piece right here. I'd say, grab it right here, rotate it some amount and then trim it and, and be good there. If you are actually looking to, you know, pseudo design this thing, uh, what you would do is a lot of times cords are, they're braced by webs based on their length. So depending on how long this span is, the span being from here down to here, I'll have two, three, four different spans that I want to put webs in for. So what I can do real quick is 
draw a line right there, hit divide, and then I can actually slide my uh, cursor along. And when I do that, the cursor right there, if you look at the bottom, it's, I know it's small, but it actually says, you know, this is three segments. Each segment is three foot five. If I go a little bit smaller, it says two segments at five foot. So if my maximum panel length on the top cord is four feet, I know I have to take this down to three segments. Then maybe on the bottom, I can go a little bit bigger because there's less load on the bottom than there's on the top. So I might be able to grab that, hit divide, and just leave that at one. Then what I could do is I come in here just to, just to help you visualize what I just did there. I know my geometry is going to close up, but oh, where's my other? Nope. Where are, you, where are you at? There we go. So that would be geometry properly divided based on a four foot and five foot top cord bottom cord span. So just uh, an option. That's you. You could do that. That's cool. I didn't know the tooltip showed the uh, length of the divisions. I knew the you know, segments was showed up in the measurements box, but um, that's cool. Good yeah, tip. Good stuff. All right. So I'm going to rotate this. I want the center of this tr this vertical member to hit right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate it from the middle. I'm going to grab the end, the middle point, and I'm going to bring it over here, hitting option, of course, like that. And then I can rotate that one, grab it by. I just go center to center, and then I can always just use those snap points. I forgot to hit option again. Who's, who's watching me? Oy. All right. Don't forget to copy. If you're in the uh, the classroom, copying is a bad thing, but when you're making trusses like this, copying is a good thing. That is true. There we go. So that's what my truss looked like. And then again, same thing as I did before. Uh, I'm just going to come in here, trace a couple lines, come up here. So with this kind of thing, I have some, again, this a lot of times comes down to fabrication. How are these going to get cut? Uh, if this is going to be cut at a vertical, I could, I could do that. I could make, make this go straight up. Um, if it's going to be cut at an angle between the two, I could change that. Uh, I have a lot of options as far as how I want to put that geometry in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make it, I don't know, I'm going to put it here because I honestly don't remember how I preferred to do that. See, this is what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I got I to gotta, I gotta fake it, fake it, pretend. Hey, you there we fooled go. me. It looks good to me. That's that's that works. Um, we had a couple people asking about free extension, or maybe it's just the same person uh, twice. Free extensions for truss, um, and I feel like this is sort of the way to do it, with the not paid way. But um, as Sven points out, Medik as a extension is a good one. But um, because it's such a specialized thing, I feel like normally you're going to run into getting a, a paid extension for it. Um, or you can do it manually like this. Yeah, I don't know any anybody who does this for free. So it's definitely like like Matt said. Yeah, this is this is something you would definitely if you're doing this. But this, this is this is so rarely a hobbyist thing. <laughs> Not a lot of people go. Oh, it's Saturday. I'm gonna go truss a roof for fun. It's usually <laughs> something that somebody somewhere is getting paid for. So if that's you, if you're actually you know, getting paid to do truss design and you want to use SketchUp, the extensions that are out there for pay are so, so worth it. So uh, yeah, I would not be afraid of looking at something because it costs a little bit, especially if you're using it in a professional setting. Yeah. Yeah. Save yourself some time and some headaches. That's right. Um, Louise had a question about, which you may um, get to later on, mm -hmm. but talking about splicing the wooden beams to the hip rafter or hip truss. Um is what he asked for. So maybe that's something that uh gonna run into later, but I just wanted to call it out now. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw a hip down here. So right here, I wanna start simple and just do a run and trusses all the way across. But when we come, when we keep working through here, we'll put a hip in and talk about connections and that kind of stuff. Um, Perfect. On that note, I'm not going to mess with uh, putting uh plates on here, gang nail or truss plate or nail plate or whatever you want to call it. Different places call them different things. I'm not going to mess with that. You absolutely can. You can come in with a rectangle, throw it on here like this, push, pull it out a little bit. 
Um, I don't do it for a couple reasons. One is it's just a Z fighting magnet. Doesn't matter really how thick you make this, by the time you zoom out, your, your lines on the inside are gonna show through. So if the reason you're doing it is for appearances, it's pretty rough. So what you would have to end up doing is going into each of these members and hiding lines to get it to not show through and get rid of the Z fighting. Um, the other thing is that an actual plate, I mean, it's thin, we're, we're talking about, you know, thin material to begin with. And when it's put into the truss, it's actually squished into the wood so much that it is flush with the face of the wood. So, I mean, it should be all the way in there. It shouldn't be proud of the wood at all. It should be flat. Um, to that note, so, so for that reason, I generally, when I've done this, I've done it without, or if I really wanted to look like it was super special and super beautiful, I would, when I got done with this, I would take all of this, whoops, sorry. I would grab, oh, there we go. I would grab all these pieces, explode them, and then come in and draw rectangles, trim them out, and color them silver. So if you want plates or something like that just for looks, that would be the way to go about it. Uh, in this case where I want to actually see all the members and work with them, uh, then I'd stay away from that. So just a, just a thing to think about. Um, Great call out. Thanks. All right, I'm going to grab this guy right here. I am going to... Okay, so here's the thing. One thing to consider right here is my truss spacing. So I put this one back exactly two foot. A lot of times to maintain uh, spacing, so you, you go at a specific spacing, so you could take an eight foot sheet of plywood, lay it down on top of here, and the ends are on a truss, so they can be connected down. So that means, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one, option, I'm gonna copy it this way, 24, and I'm gonna do 10X, whoops. 24, enter, and then I'm going to put 10 next. All right. So if I came in with an eight foot piece of plywood right now and it was on the edge and I came this way eight feet, look where that goes right there. So that, let me just here finish this off real quick. Draw a board. So that ends just on the edge here. So what'll usually happen is this run of trusses will actually start this way 0.75, three quarters of an inch. That way, plywood that's flush with the end ends right here on the end of, or in the middle of a truss. So that's not floating there, it has something to connect down to. That spacing may often start based on, again, the overhang. What I'm gonna do for the overhang, if I'm gonna drop this or I'm gonna build a ladder panel, something like that. If that, say that's six inches, I would shift that whole thing over so this first truss would be six more inches this direction. Just something to consider, something to think about there. So much information. Who knew? I know. See, you were worried that it you lost that stuff, but no, it's still in there. It's still rattling around the old noggin. That's right. I was, oh, look at that. Magnifico. I guess on the number of trusses I need there. There we go. All right, so at that point, I have this same truss there's a huge run. I got a gable on either end. It's looking awesome. It's looking solid. Probably should save. <laughs> That's a good call. Save. And there we go. We had a, a point from Steven here in the chat. The web runner should be hinged in the middle of the bottom and top cord. What do you think about that? What? I was drinking. I couldn't <laughs> listen. <laughs> um, Steven, the web runner should be hinged in the middle of the bottom and top cord. I don't know what that means, but uh, that is not a term I'm familiar with. Something I'm going to point this out. I'm just going to throw this out here. This is not an excuse, but it could sure sound like one. Um, terminology in the construction industry, everybody thinks they have the way to say things. So I designed trusses. I was a, a senior designer for seven years. I've never heard the term web runner before. So um yeah i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> i'm not saying you're wrong i just don't know what you're talking about uh yeah i don't know maybe somebody wants to google that or post something in the forum that explains what's going on there could happen could be i don't know all right yeah forum thread's good um yeah all right carry on <laughs> so something you'll notice right here from here over these guys are not supported at all so what we want to do is we want to put a girder truss, a load-bearing truss is going to sit there. 
uh, on top of these walls and hold these ones in, in hangers, in connectors. So that's, that's a good thing that'll happen. But in order to happen, we need to get rid of the overhangs because the truss is going to run right here where the ends of these are. So I'm going to take this group of trusses. I'm going to right click and say make unique. Uh, again, I'm, I'm making up, I'm just straight up throwing, throwing words in here for the names. I get if you're working with a trust layout, you're probably going to have better names than this, but uh, this might be T02 rather than T01 or T01A, uh, but I'm going to call them 20 foot single overhang. Hey, I was a trust engineer for uh, 20 years. I never heard of 20 foot truss uh, single overhang. It's so unique. It's a unique wrong. term for sure. Yeah. So I'm going to grab one of those components and get rid of that overhang. And there I go. I have a different truss profile now with all those. Speaking of which, I'm going to grab this truss right here. I'm going to go to rotate. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm going to put it where it goes. Where it goes is right at this corner right here. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and make this unique also. I'm just going to call it a girder. Again, terminology I'm familiar with, not saying this is the only thing you could call this thing. And on that girder, I'm going to get rid of the overhang here also. Chop the overhang. Mario asks, what's the device in your left hand? That is a 3D mouse. It's the Space Mouse Enterprise by 3D Connection. Uh, not necessary to use SketchUp, but um, definitely helps you take to the, the next level a little bit once you're feeling stuck and um, also good for presentation, nice smooth moves. Um, so it definitely takes a little learning curve to get used to it and move around, but um, it uh, allows you to free up your other hand to use your mouse and select stuff and change tools and stuff like that when you're navigating at the same time. That's right. I like that. I don't have to answer a question anymore. That's got me. I really should make a drop for that. But, uh, <laughs> I just have stupid stuff instead. Um, <laughs> And Michael, thank you for uh, picking up the slack as well. He knew exactly Michael got it. spot on what it was. Good call. Nice. All right. Um, I'm going to take one of these standard trusses and I'm just going to option rotate it 90 degrees. That's just to get it over here. This is not in the right spot, obviously, but uh, that is just to get it rotated and on here. So I want to put a hip on this side. So a hip roof is so where this is a gable, it's flat pointy side up like this uh, on a hip roof, it would be coming sloping down on the front as well as the side. So at 45 degrees, that slope would change. To frame that, I need uh, a member a certain distance back. I'm going to say six feet back, a bearing member that would allow smaller members to run perpendicular to slope down the face. So I'm going to grab this piece right here. I'm going to option. Actually, I don't need an option copy. I'm just going to shift it this way, six foot. And I'm going to take this now. I'm going to make it unique. Call it a hip girder. Because why not? Because that's what I do. All right. Now, this is where we start needing some geometry to, to play with. And I'm going to, I'm going to point out too, there are, I could think of five different ways to frame a hip I, I, I get it. There's different options under, over, different ways to do this thing. I'm not trying to argue with you or change how you do this if you do this. I'm just going to show, again, the geometry that I know uh, how I would put this in. So what I'm going to do in this case is I had to figure out where this truss is going to be flat. So here's kind of a cool bit of geometry. Um, so what we're looking for in case you guys aren't keeping up with me, we're looking for geometry that looks like this from above. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, we had a quick question about how much the Space Mouse costs. The one Aaron uses costs 400, but there's also cheaper ones I think 150 is a cheaper one. And there's also other companies that make 3D mice as well. But uh, for 3D connection, yeah, anywhere between 150 and 400 US dollars. That's right. 
All right, and Badal says hello to you from India. Hello back at you, Badal. All right, so when we're looking at this, I took that truss and I shifted it back six feet, right? So it came back this way, this amount. Now, as I look at this, so if I come draw a profile on here, Get there, there you go. Right, this is what the profile of that truss would look like if it followed that geometry, the imaginary geometry. With this, these are the same. So because it's 45 degrees, because the slopes are the same, that means this has to run up the same distance that it ran over, if that makes sense. So what that means is I will come from here Am I off? Am I a little off there? No, that's right. Okay. I'm going to come this way six feet and then draw a line up. That's where my geometry will break. Okay, so if I come in here right now, I could actually take this. I could take this right here, break that like that. And I'm not going to worry about the second half. I'm going to come back and, you know, add that stuff. Let's get, we'll just get rid of it. We only need half this because there's, there's a symmetric truss. Um, probably get rid of that too. All right. So now what we'll do is take a member. I guess we could even just take this guy right here. Again, this is one of the reasons I like groups rather than uh, dealing with... Uh, I like to deal with groups rather than components because I can just grab a piece, copy it, and edit it. I don't have to worry about making it unique or anything like that. Or forgetting to make it unique and then... Which is more likely, you're right. You Absolutely. Up your entire roof, yeah. <laughs> That's probably the way I would go about that. Uh, <laughs> that, would be, that would be my method. All right. That gets me that location. So again, lots of stuff to consider here. Some people might make the top and bottom cord two by sixes rather than two by fours. Uh, some people might drop this down to allow for a member to span over the top. Lots of things that could happen. I'm gonna do it this way, because my job. All right, rotate like that. And then, whoa, 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 Speedy. 3D mouse just got so happy. Let's go inside. Those hands. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's, let's go inside. Those hands. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's cold out here. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take this member now. Again, take that option copy. It's funny. I apologize for all the disclaiming, but like I just hear it. I, I hear it in my head because I know it's going to happen in the comments. This video is going to go up on to uh, onto YouTube, and somebody somewhere is just going to going to just. Oh, that's the worst way you could possibly do that. Everybody knows you, blah, 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 blah. And, and I, I will just, I will say this. So in addition to, yes, doing trust design, I've also taught people uh, how to use design software and that kind of thing. And I can say with 100% certainty that there is not one way to do anything anywhere ever. It's, it's always... A folks. You heard it here 100%. He said it. <laughs> I promise that... Uh, Oops. Uh, That's yeah. That's a guarantee. Yeah. So just so just just roll with me. You know, if you're if you're if you're having like this little little fit right now, where you really want to say that there's only one way to do it, just just think about it. Think about how people live in different places, and you know, speak different languages, have different terms. That's how that's and how as stuff. Michael happens. points out. The contractor is going to do it his way anyways. <laughs> well, and that's the that's the thing, you know, it cracks me up because again, kind of worked in a couple different aspects of building design, and one thing that I will will always be true is that the trust designer, whatever you give them, they're going to go through and remodel it. It doesn't matter how beautiful you model your your roof layout, if you created 2D or 3D trust profiles for them to look at, they're going to go in and do it the way they're going to. And that's not to be rude. That's not to like flex or anything. That's because at the end of the day, they're responsible. Their engineer is signing off on that work. Uh, so they, they got to make sure that they know everything that gets designed. Plus they got to build it. So 
nice as beautiful as your drawing might be, it might not actually be what they need. So uh, yeah, they're, they're going to do their own thing anyways. Yeah, that's understandable. Makes sense. Uh, we have Omar here in the chat saying hi to you and says, no judgments from him. Keep on going. Thank you, Omar. Omar said I'm good. <laughs> You've arrived. All right, I'm going to go ahead and copy that half of the roof over here. Copy that. That's right. Uh, so another thing. Oh, that's that's something. Okay, so I'm I'm from the Midwest, right? You guys know I'm an I'm an Illinois boy, uh, and I do say roof. Ooh, roof. I I get behind those. I get behind my vowels like every good Midwesterner should. Um, and I know I've been harassed about not saying roof before because it's roof. Uh, roof. Hey, hey, double O's there. That dev is definitely roof. Is that Sonder? <laughs> no, I think that's from a song. Um, the roof. Oh. The roof, the roof is on fire. Uh, <laughs> but that's definitely saying roof. My dad says rough, too. He's from Connecticut. Ah, there you go. Definitely has rough going on. All right. Let's, let's, hear, that. let's hear that in the chat. Please hop in there and phonetically spell the name of that group of geometry that tops off a house. Let's let's hear what we all call it. Or in your own language. It doesn't have to be how you That's pronounce true. the R word. And then Matt will pronounce whatever that other language word is perfectly. <laughs> yeah, you'll have a 60 second period where whatever you write in the chat, I will pronounce. <laughs> oh, Omar, I grew up saying pop, not soda. Or Coke. Do you know there's some places in the world where people call everything with bubbles Coke? It's true. It's that crazy. sounds like a fantastical other world. It's a crazy world we live in, guys. Um, yeah, oh, pop. Pop just sounds so much more pop. Soda is like, doesn't describe, it's not onomatopoetic. It's not like pop is very in your face and there and descriptive and good and soda is bad. And so is Coke, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense to me. That was that was just Matt got kind of a little bit fired up about that. I think <laughs> I will. We should do that on the debate podcast. <laughs> Pop or soda? <laughs> I need to find somebody, somebody who's all the soda. That's the problem there. In the back, it's like it's Coke. <laughs> yeah, Get out. Right. That's why you're in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Security. <laughs> all right. Uh, so a couple more pieces to do here. It's going to start to go quick. I mean. I mean, I guess this isn't really going slow at this point, but uh, yeah, it's gonna get it's gonna get quicker here. So I'm just grabbing a truss, throwing it over here. The other thing to think about with some of this stuff, uh, some of this stuff, I sh shift this over six feet. Also, this is gonna be uh, my truss member running this direction. Um, some of this stuff you can create it once and save it as a component too. So you could actually create this entire 20 foot hip set as a component, drop it on another building. It's 26 feet instead. No problem. Stretch those trusses, add an extra jack in the front and you're done. So uh, a lot of this stuff, if you, if you are planning on repeat modeling this stuff, you can actually do it fewer times. I'm going to make this unique. That's a good idea. Uh, Michael says, Ruff just calls the dog. I, I buy it. Uh, Steven says, I'm hip to that. I love I'm you guys. I'm surprised there hasn't been more uh, puns in the chat yet, but uh, we do have the rim shot sound drop ready to go. So if you feel so inclined, certainly uh, inclined, slope, get it? Okay. Wow. He can't um, stop. It's like breathing, guys. <laughs> Um, let's see. I do appreciate okay. that you had to call out and explain it for yourself so you could get your own drop. I, I did like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, at least I have the power. Like everyone in the chat, you know, is at the whim of my. That's right. Uh, my finger on the thing, but oh, I can definitely go back and. Um, let's see. We have Doc. Texper. Uh, Studio RT Cool says it's got to be long. Oh, roof. Roofy, says Don. This is just me trying to pronounce what you guys have typed here. Talk. Tack? Talk. Talkies? Like the... 
Fake Doritos? I've never heard of those. Oh, really? Kind of big are with the kids like nowadays. Ring? No, I think they're. I think they are from Mexico. Actually, they're like a rolled up Dorito and yeah. Oh, curled interesting. Up. I like it. Here in Brazil, we call roofs. Uh, ah, go for it. Tel <laughs> Telia do. Telia do. Okay. <laughs> I said Matt would say it. I did not say he would do it right. <laughs> Sharpantha. Sharpantha. Sharpantha? That's Romanian. Sakf. That's Arabic. Sakf. S A Q F. Pronounce that, Aaron. <laughs> I don't have to. I got a guy for that. <laughs> wow. Takis without the E's. Yeah. Tak. Tak. Okay. Cool. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um very nice so uh what do you do what are these pieces that you're adding in now or what's the nomenclature for I those? See. so these are my my six foot face jacks so these will carry the roof up that direction uh i did make a copy of this truss this girder right here this will be unique and i'll just call this 20 foot step down truss and this, of course, is going to go up another two feet because the thing, or well, one one foot higher here is what will happen, but it'll cut back another two feet. So that'll be a little bit different geometry, which we can do. We, we can do that now. Why not, right? Easy. That's right. No problem. Um, these are just my previous. <laughs> I'm just like quoting my own previous drops now. For those of you who don't know, I have to like refer. I only have a certain number of sound clips I can play every week, or else I have to like recycle them. There's you know a max number, so yeah, there was an old one that went no problem. Um, but he doesn't. Portuguese, the, go ahead. I say, but he doesn't have it anymore. So now we gotta. I don't have it, but I still got it. That's right. Oh, you got it. <laughs> okay. Um, is that even a joke? No. I don't know. I um, I enjoy, it made me smile. <laughs> in Portuguese, this roof is called Trelisa. Right. Trelisa. It's my. I like that. War like that. Bottle of pop, a sugary carbonated drink. I absolutely agree with you there. Cannot agree more. Awesome. All right. I'm going to get this top cord over here. Teliado. Teliado. Telado? Teliado. Um, Matt's learning a speak. lot, you guys. This is I like learning it. How to speak, folks. Vamos. That's what I know. ¿Qué pasa? Nada. Pasa. All right. Okay, here we go. Scottish Gaelic. Mulach. M Mulak? Sounds like the bad guy from Raiders. <laughs> That's Belloc, not Mulak. I call him Belosh. <laughs> you guys are familiar <laughs> with that film. It's a good one. Um, hey, let's talk about some uh, news, some stuff that went on over the past, uh, what, day? Yesterday, a lot of stuff going on. That was a thing. The news that everyone's talking about, of course. We're calling it the Dynamic Island. New iPhone announced, and uh, iPhone 14, they say, has the dynamic island. Uh, pretty cool. Any of you folks uh, ordering those phones? Got the new phones coming out? Also, yesterday, big news. Opening day of the NFL season. Bills beat the Rams. Buffalo Bills, of course. Um, so I feel like that was news I was not aware of. Yeah, opening day, Thursday night football, and uh, you know what? Football's back. Kickoff has begun. Uh, American football, of course, as that is. I feel like we have a mostly um, worldwide crowd here today, probably not too many NFL viewers. Um, and, of course, uh, the other headline breaking news yesterday, um, 
Glass Onion trailer dropped the new uh, Benoit Blanc mystery from Ryan Johnson. So that is a big piece of news. A lot of views already. He, Ryan Johnson did say no spoilers were in the trailer, so you can definitely watch it. But if you want to go in with completely clean slate, then don't watch that. Just uh, just go in. So. No other big news, Matt? Um, oh, I also do have here... Uh, I can't read this real well. My handwriting's poor. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, UK folks, our condolences go out to you, of course. Queen Elizabeth II passed on. Um, so, longest reigning British monarch. What a reign. And, uh, yeah. So, that's big news. Long life, well lived, uh, a lot accomplished, of course. And, uh, so we pay our respects to everyone out of the British Isles and um, the entire Commonwealth today here on SketchUp Live, as we do each and every week. The Queen. So. Oops. Yeah, that was that was a. Uh... That that felt like. Uh... Big and surprising, I guess. Again, here we are. I know Americans were not uh, always, you know, plugged into how everything goes on. But uh, I think we all knew who the the queen was, which is kind of a big deal. Yeah. Oh, uh, I heard somebody say most recognizable face in the world, and uh, at first I was like, no way, and then I was like, oh yeah, probably right. I don't know why I said no way, but um, yeah, recognizable face, of course. And life well lived, Buckingham Palace. Ninety six. Ninety six years old. That's 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 aspirational part of that story. Yeah, someday perhaps. And died from what I've heard peacefully in her sleep. That sounds also awesome. What a way to go. Um, yeah. All right. So this uh, corner geometry is different because it's at a 45 degrees. It's not a 612 slope. It's slightly off of that. So with this geometry already in here, though, it's real easy to come in and put the geometry where it needs to be. The top chord is going to, as it's coming up the slope, meet these two pieces. So it's a little bit lower. And then, of course, everything's going to be uh, longer, including this piece right here. We're going to go ahead and rotate it up. I'm going to rotate it on this face. And I'm going to... Grab it and pull it up to there. All right, so a little, little bit high, so we gotta drop it back down because it should intersect this line. This line is a projection of where the top of this geometry is right there, you see? So I'll go ahead and grab that. So I know it's, I know it's at the right spot here. And I just gotta rotate it down. So it hits that. There we go. With that, kind that jump of, just I have to say it's it's uh, satisfying. You know, we've done some like sort of organic stuff in the past. We've done. It's nice to see stuff that snaps together exactly right, and it's like has a specific way to be, <laughs> and uh, you know, just fits exactly right. It's like very nice to to be par to be party to this. Is that that's not the right word? But it's always a party on Fridays, Matt. Yay! <laughs> exactly what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Raphael. Good to see you. All right. I'm just going to... Uh, I am noticing right now that I am doing a lot of modeling uh, with everything else turned on. I don't know if you guys caught that or not. Um... I'm not doing much hiding of other geometry. Uh, 
You grabbed a weird face, huh? Yeah. That was, that was a really weird face. All right, there we go. Um, a lot of what I just did there could have easily been done. Uh, I could have exited context there. But I didn't. So there you go. All right. But so like I said... reference geometry that's out of it or... Uh, yeah, in some cases I do, but I could be toggling this on and off to do things like, you know, clean up here. Uh, I was oh, doing so that. Were you I was saying doing that, that it's faster to, to navigate or that you'd, well, you'd be able to see the geometry easier? What I would say is that it's easier to navigate that. And I'm not, again, not selling, but one of the nice things about a 3D mouse, because you were asked, talking about it earlier, is getting in here and like doing this kind of work to go in and clean up stuff. Super easy. This, um, I know I'm a little bit rusty, but I have a harder time getting to my perfect view quite, whoop, quite as quick when I'm doing this. It's still not bad, I guess, but yeah, I don't know. I guess it's an option. It's a thing I was doing that I thought I felt for some reason needed to comment on. Mm -hmm. How's that? Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Just completely zoning out. No, I was listening. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, good to uh, to navigate with the mouse and also, of course, to hide rest of model when needed. Sign that a shortcut. Um, yes. Great use of shortcut keys. Uh, and speaking of clever things to do with the software, Omar, again, points out that you're not using any plugins, which is, uh, uh, first of all, nice to watch. But also, he says, there's a quiet revolution going on, modeling without plugins. You know, it's, it's I know that's being said tongue in cheek, but uh, I think there is a little, I don't know if I call it a revolution, but I think there's a purist movement out there of people who like to see how far they can get with just straight, like no plugins. Uh, if you guys are on Facebook at all, uh, you should check out Box, who's a member of our forum. He has a page called Box GIFs, where he creates some really cool geometry. And it's all done, well, not all. He, he does occasionally do extension videos or, or animations, but a lot of it is just straight up SketchUp, just regular old SketchUp. Uh, pretty cool to see what somebody can do with that. If if those people had a name, like if there's like you know uh, you know you have the whatever the baby boomers, you have the you know millennials or whatever, what would the people? Maybe it's not a generation, but uh, what would be the people who don't use any plugins? What would that be called? Hmm. What do you guys think? People in What's, the chat. Yeah. What would you like to be called? First of all, if you don't use extensions, and then. <laughs> I was thinking also, what's a derogatory name for somebody who loves extensions? <laughs> I don't use any native tools. <laughs> you know, I so I it, again not this is not intended to come off as negative at all. I love extensions. We use extensions on here all the time. Uh, I just want to say that there is uh, a thing to think about with extensions. If you see something and you model it and your first response is, I got to find an extension to do that to make it easier. I would recommend you pump the brakes, go back and figure out why it is you want to make that easier because that's not necessarily what you should be doing. Uh, you might, it might if, if, if you're looking for an extension to prevent yourself from having to learn how to do something, maybe you shouldn't be using an extension. If it's something that you're doing and you do it repetitively and you're trying to save time or you know there's a quicker way to do it, I'm not opposed to extensions at all, like I said, but uh, it's something to think about because I've seen a lot of posts on the forum where it's like, I want to create this geometry. Where's the extension for it? And people will come back and go, well, you know, it's not that hard to do. Here's the steps to do it. Yeah, I don't want, I just want an extension to do it. When I see that, then I go, hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe you shouldn't want an extension. Yeah, just search for it on 3D Warehouse. Somebody's probably already made it. <laughs> there you go. Even have to. That's the one-click way to do something. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, let's see. We have some vanilla SketchUp. So uh, vanillas and extensioneers. <laughs> Ooh. Um, nativists, says Don. I kind of like that one. It's a good one. Michael, the Rebel Alliance. 
<laughs> Man, it's like I've heard that Star before. Wars theme, you know, we're we're <laughs> we're all in for the Star Wars over here. And uh, Omar says good point about the learning to do something versus having the one click solution. Uh, looks like Tension asks, did you get rid of Jody? No, Jody is uh, is still around and kicking. He's still alive and well, but he uh, we do like every other week for uh, for not only the people who are modeling, doing the hard work, but also uh, co-hosting duties. So you're stuck with me today. I find it interesting that, that you said uh, said duty and then played a tuba. I really, a childish part of me enjoyed that very much. <laughs> I feel like I should apologize again. I'm sorry. <laughs> Duty. Oh, here we go. Uh, the guys that use no plugins and extensions should be called the Windows XP generation. <laughs> ooh, got it. Got <laughs> gloves came off. Earn. Ooh, that's a punch. Punch sound. Uh, shots fired, shots fired. Omar says extension junkies. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, Oops. Uh, please try Kerala Model House next Friday. I don't know what that is, but I will look it up. Worth considering, I do know that next Friday, Eric will be on here. And he, I think, will be doing some... He already knows what he's doing. I don't know what it is. We love, we do love taking your guys' suggestions. Please keep giving us suggestions. Uh, it's awesome. Don't be offended if we don't do your suggestion the next week. Uh, I've had a couple of people who said, you never listen to me. <laughs> uh, you know, you never listen to feedback from anybody. We do listen to feedback. We just sometimes will have these modeling sessions planned out like a month or two in advance. So uh, when that's the case, then we don't always, you know, on a dime, switch what we're going to model. Yeah. Oh, we're definitely planning far ahead. But we also have uh, so many, you know, creative, good ideas from you guys that we have a, a list of ones to get through. So um, yeah, we're listening and we are taking notes. Um, so keep an eye out. The All originals right. says James for Ooh, I like that. SketchUp core. I kind of like just the idea of gone native too. That's kind of fun. I, <laughs> I think yeah. that that's oh, totally. a whole idea of native tools, native. Yeah, that's fun. Native tools. Um, Luis was asking how to fill that little space. Is that, you know more about trusses than I do. Is it just called truss or trusses? Trusses, they're called trusses. Uh, trusses. The, the term for what this is, some people will call it a truss roof. Some people will call it a trust ED roof. Um, trust ED. Tr trust. Sorry, I was spelling that T-R-U-S-S-E-D, trust roof, not T-R-U-S-T roof. Trust, duh. Duh, that was it, that was it, trust, duh. Um, <laughs> are we talking about this gap up here? Because this, yeah, this needs some stuff, which we're going to do right now. I don't know if there was like a little, a little piece between the two um, trusses, trusses. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, if you want to... Specify, if we're talking about this space up here, this valley right here, I'm going to do a couple quick valley trusses just to show how that goes in there. Uh, but yeah. I think he was maybe talking about between the two trusses on the corner, there's like, you know, I don't know if they, I assume they probably oh, right here. match up like 100%. Yeah. Right. So a couple things that could happen. What's that? Hold on. I gotta... There we go. Um, Get out of it. Yeah, depending on how these are built, there's a couple different ways, again, that this could be done. This could actually be done with a connector. Somebody could use a 45 degree connector here to put this on, like a hanger, something like that. Some truss shops will run this three and a half inches long and actually angle cut it so that they can be face nailed into the side of the girder. Uh, the girder itself too. Some places will put a vertical at these connections. Um, some people will leave this open like this. Some people will close the end jack up. It's, again, uh, 
so many ways to do it. So uh, I'm just showing some options. I felt like the idea of going in and adding an extra vertical there, you guys caught that. I think you know how that works. So I wasn't too worried about that. I've done it six times already. So yeah, this, this could be done a bunch of different ways. Um, and again, like I said, the whole hip, some people will like drop this piece down to run these up over so they hit the, the ends. Some will drop these pieces down for an inch and a half so they can lay like a, a, a plate there or, or a, a flat members across there to frame on. Uh, some will do what we always call the California or, or stick truss where the top and bottom cords lap over each other and it looks like a spider web. I don't understand how it works. So there's lots of options. Lots of options on how this could get done. I just wanted to throw in a representation of it for sure. Good call. All right. Thanks for. Yeah. I love music. I, I'm with you, voice. <laughs> I don't know who that was. All right. Elijah Wood. Oh. All right. AKA Frodo. Frodo. Maybe right. the hobbits, that can be the people who don't use extensions can be called hobbits. There you go. All right. So I'm drawing a line across here. And then I'm, again, I'm just going to throw, create some geometry. I'm going to come up 3.5. I'm going to draw that across this way. Drop it down. Bring that out 1.5. I don't think I did that right. 1.5. What? You're, making, you're a liar. You're nuts. You're no 1.5. 1.5. I've seen 1.5, and that is not you. I served with 1.5. <laughs> <laughs> I know 1.5. We've been through some yeah. stuff. Stuff. All right, I'm going to make this into a group. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to rotate it by this bottom point. Actually, I'm going to take... A copy of it, bring it down to the bottom point. I'm going to rotate that, that up to where it will hit that. And then I'm going to go to that point right there, drop a line vertical. I have a vertical I can inference. Here we go, right here. In hover for just a second, drop that line down, push that through like that. Come down here, run this flat across like that, push that back like that, come in here. So there's other things that'll happen with the framing of these uh, valley trusses too. Some people will push up the bottom cord or offset them for sheathing or how these happen. Again, as many different ways to create this piece as there are roofs out there to frame. Roof with a long O. Ooh. Because that's ooh. that's why. It's because I'm insecure, and when somebody looks at my work, I want to get an ooh out of them no matter what. So that's why I go for roof. I'm like, hey, Just I'm glad you noticed. In between, <laughs> the beginning and end, but then let them go for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. What did you do to my roof? And all you hear is ooh. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, so this piece now, I'm going to take it, uh, just kind of going down this ridge line here. I'm going to go 24, and let's see, that's going to go three times. Yeah, that'll get me all the way there. And this, th I know this is hard to see. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, uh, but bear with me. I'm going to grab this guy, and I think this will come up. Oops, got to make it unique. Didn't make it unique. Made a component, didn't make it unique. All right, make it unique. When you make something unique too, you you have to uh, you have to make them. These ones are gonna be unique one at a time. I can't actually grab all of them. If I grab a group of them, say make unique, it makes them all into a new unique component. So, just FYI, each of these, each one of these is four foot shorter than the one before. By the way, so as I'm renaming these, I'm making each one short. So this is four foot. This one will be eight foot. This one will be 12 foot. And I call this guy 16, it should be. Oh, that means 
This one didn't get made unique. All right, I'll make this one unique. Tension was impressed by how well you've been naming components. It's it's using up everything I got, I'll be honest with you. Full focus. Whew. And I think you've had enough. I, I I don't argue with that. I think I'm done. I'm close. I'm there. I'm almost there. All right. So each one, because one of the things that, so I, I, I cheated a little bit here, not cheated. I was intentional about the slope I used on here. Six over 12 is a two to one ratio. So that means for every, that slope for every foot you go over, it raises up six. It's a nice thing to design on because even you guys know math is not always my strong point. Like not by not always, I mean, it's never, ever in my life been my strong point. Uh, but a six to one is real easy. So if something moves two foot up the plane, it's a foot taller. So you move horizontally two foot, you're up one foot. If you move horizontally one foot, you're up six foot. So it makes it real easy to do this kind of stuff. But that was just that was just my little little tiny bit of uh, you know simplifying my life and thereby your viewing experience. Uh, now, what is that in metric? Can you simplify that for me, please? Yes. <laughs> you asked, could I simplify them for you? I, I, I chose to answer the second question, not the first. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I did uh, once, it, again, pre-SketchUp, I did a full-on uh, design training with a company in Toronto and I had to spend a whole week or two weeks. It was two weeks working in metric. And I will, I've, I've talked about this before. The process of working with metric values, everything being divisible by 10, I, it's so nice. It's so easy. <laughs> you, you do 10 of something and it goes to the next, you know, it's so nice. It's, it's an awesome way to do things. I love it. Uh, but having said that, I was working in dimensions that I had no clue about. Like, I don't, this is 120 millimeters. This big, this big, oh. But, but <laughs> it was, no reference. but it's way no easier idea. to do that math for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Metrics got some things figured out. So yeah. Good one there, queen. Long live the queen. <laughs> I, so I got a question. Uh, I, because we have an international audience, and this is not meant to be, I'm not poking fun at all. I was honestly asking about this. I know one of the things that I've seen, uh, you know, said, they'll say something like, you know, the queen is dead, long live the queen, or or, or the king is dead, long live the king. What is, what's the thing behind that? Does anybody know? Again, I'm, I'm not trying to be, not making a joke. I'm not full on, full respect for it. I've just always wondered it because I, I said that to my kids and they're like, why would they say that? And I said, I don't actually know. Um, yeah, I always assumed it was from some piece of literature or something, but I, again, don't know. I only know it as like, yeah, the pop culture reference and, and not like a. Yeah, maybe they don't word. say that. Maybe that is like rude. If so, I did not mean to for it to be taken that way. I guess now it's the queen is dead. Long live the king. Is King oh, maybe so. That could be. All right. Let me get rid of these guidelines I threw on here. And there we go. There's some valley trusses. So these ones, I, I kind of skipped over this. Uh, what could happen here is this guy. Grab a piece. Uh... Generally speaking, these will have, they won't be, they won't be webbed like uh, structural trusses. So a structural truss is spanning from one side to the other. So across all those walls. So that's why I get those, those diagonal pieces that chop it up. This is, these guys are in here to give strength to this shape. That's why they, they go back and forth. So the load is supported. These guys sit on top and literally transfer load that sits on top down to their bottom, like directly through. So they're considered fully supported all the way across the bottom. So what would probably happen is something like I'd come in here, offset that 24. I would probably do this. This is all I would put in there for framing. 
Uh, so we had a, a few people respond in the chat about the King yes. of Dead, Long Live the King thing. And so a lot of people, what they're saying is about, it's about the success, succession plan. So it's the previous monarch and then the new monarch. Or okay. just that like the title of king, the, the idea of king is more important than any one particular person. That makes sense. Cool. Again, that, that's I, I was honestly that once you once you say it, that makes total sense. Like, of course, that's what it means. Um, but yeah, that's cool. And Omega here in the chat says the phrase was first declared upon upon the death of King Charles the sixth, proclaiming his son Charles the seventh king. Ah, so, very cool. Uh, and then also. Michael here says suggests the complete book of framing by Scott Simpson, which explains joinery. So anybody has questions about framing or wants to learn more? It looks like that's a good place to go. Awesome. All right. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 20 foot truss, grab that top cord, slide it on over. Go into the bottom cord here, draw a couple lines. Here's my butt cut straight up quarter inch. There's the line where it meets. And then, oh, I did not quite draw that. I think I drew that line a little short. There you go, push that over. And then all I have to do is come in, come in this top cord, run that straight up. that over this top cord, same thing. And then I just have to clean up a couple of webs. So these guys right here go away completely. The, oops. This guy right here gets a little, a little ear knocked off there. This guy right here. Oh, sounds like Van Gogh over here. That's right. <laughs> Sorry. My Van Gogh web. It's not really knocked off or lopped off, chopped off. It was not good. It was just not good. All across the board, not good. <laughs> or hang on to those suckers. So where you can, keep those ears on your head. You got two for a reason. Stick with it. That's right. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to make this unique and call it a 12 foot truss. And then same thing. I'll do the same exact. Actually, if I wanted to, just as a timekeeper, I could come over or time saver. I could grab these three pieces, copy them, come into this, get rid of that geometry, paste this in. I'll just drop it right on top of the existing geometry. A weird. Inferencing to some. Yeah, something. Something's. Point. I was not, I was, that first one, I, I picked the point as I made the component. The rest of my, I kind of stopped doing that. Uh, all right, so these ones, this is a short truss. So depending on the load, I might be able to get away with just like a, a single web here in the middle. I might have to put some other ones in there. I to, but yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do this because... Just cause, just cause that's why I'm not, that's, that's why I'm doing it. You don't need an answer. That's right. I got the mouse. Quit bugging me guys. <laughs> no reason needed. Just, uh, just go for it. We're all behind you. I just wanted to tell you good luck. We're all counting on you. Oh, uh, um, Leslie. we had a question here about what do you think of the NVIDIA Omniverse with SketchUp or do you have opinion, any opinions at all? I don't have enough knowledge to speak about it, but, um, nor I alas, anybody out there got experience hands-on with Omniverse? Um, and then Luis is, uh, asking again about the little space. Um, and uh, let's see, can be confusing to a new modeler, says Tension. Maybe you can make a copy off to the side and fill the space to show him. Are we talking about this jack truss still? This guy, this guy right here? Yeah, I think the one in the corner. Okay, yeah, give me one sec. Let me finish this real quick. All right, so here we got, this little roof is actually low enough 
that another truss wouldn't fit here. So I, I was thinking I could grab one of these guys and bring him over here, but it's actually not long enough. Well, actually, it would be just, I could just squeeze it in there. No, it's four foot. So this is the same length. So I wouldn't actually have room. They would just run this back. I thought maybe I'd have another one I could copy a truss over, but it turns out it's too small. What I would do in this case, this section of roof, is these three trusses need to get their overhang lopped off. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to say make these three unique, and these will be 20 foot truss, no overhang, or you know, a T01B or whatever. That's what I would call it. I know. I know. I'm Matt's wacky like that. Matt's a uh, old school conventional trust labeling kind of guy. Yeah. Call me so old fashioned, but take that PSO3. off. <laughs> take that off there. There we go. Now none of our trusses run through each other, which is not ideal. Trusses should occupy only the space that they occupy and not occupy space of anything else. Because if you, that happens, then you got a paradox happening. Matter can't contain, be in the same place as other matter. Ugh. Quantum realm ripping apart. Cats and dogs living together. <laughs> Mass hysteria. All right. <laughs> so what I was saying is if we wanted to edit this jack right here, I could grab this piece. Option, flip it up. Whoops, I didn't grab by the end. Get in there. Option, flip that up vertical. Chop it off where it hits this cord. There you go. Now, I think his question is like, there's like a little bit oh. in, uh, I think tension points out, it's not really construction. It's more like a modeling question of, if you have two groups that are intersecting like that, how do you make that connect? So would you just edit the geometry in one of the groups or? Oh, um, uh, so <laughs> or just draw a new group or, you know, and I fill mean, it in or something. So, so for the sake of, 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 I'll answer this two ways. So for the sake of what we're doing, I wouldn't do more than this because they, a truss manufacturer would not run this long and do a big weird compound cut on a hip end to make it close up. That wouldn't happen. This this would be open or it would be run long and field cut or something like that. Um, I, I, in general, I'm just saying this, this, this is always my experience. I have seen stuff where stuff was actually cut to, to compound miter cuts and stuff. Um, generally speaking though, this is what would happen. What might happen is on the truss itself, this section right here, this face might be pushed this way, 1.5 inches. And that's what would go out of the factory, uh, giving the, the field enough material there to cut off to, to do that. Um, but I guess it's possible that, that could get cut too. If that's the case, then you'd be doing something like coming into this, and tracing around the intersection like this. Uh, hold on, I gotta think about how that would happen. Run that down and then I'll run this down long and then connect these two back up, which should give me a plane. Grab all of this. Oops. Did I draw that in the opposite? So, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, so essentially you extend one piece so they overlap and then draw around the intersection or, you know, you could use intersect with model or something like that right. to, to create edges where those geometries intersect and then just delete the extra geometry that you don't need. Right, so like that. So intersect it with that plane, and then I come in here and chop off the extra geometry. And then when I hide everything else, I have a piece like this. And these, this wasn't, this truss wasn't mirrored, so this would actually need to get flipped. Um, but that would give me something like that. And like I said, that compound miter cut, I guess, could could get done. Um, I still know that it would. 
And this, this guy right here, I would right click, lip along green. Did oh you? yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. At that point, we need to end the show because anything I do now is going to be a step down. I, just, <laughs> just being honest. So yeah, it is totally possible. You could, you could uh, create that kind of geometry. Again, it, I, 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 was starting, I was trying to think about production. If this is, you're, you're creating this as something you want to just show, awesome. This, that would be the way to go about that. Just do remember to mirror your members. This guy down here will have to get mirrored too. Let me get cocky. Watch this. No look. Oh. Dang it! <laughs> Flip along the green still. It's still the green. The axis is persistent, stupid. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they keep going the same direction. Um, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely runs in the question that we come to all the time of like, what level of detail do you go to and what mm -hmm. is the actual, you know, use of the model? And um, and Michael points out, you can just address this kind of thing with call outs and details instead of absolutely like the main big model or. Right. And that's, yeah, that goes beyond, like I said, trust framing is a weird one because the only people who are going to really design trusts are, are the people who are going to be building them. But if you wanted to get that level of detail in there to show it, uh, to, you know, to do a preliminary layout like this, or I go to a, a top view, you know, to get that preliminary layout into a set of plans or something like that, awesome. Great way to throw that in there. And that little bit of extra detail in a model looks really cool. Uh, but yeah, the level of detail you need to go to is going to depend on what your job is or what, what kind of job you're working on and then what function the model is supposed to serve. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. And I do think Louis was just more asking for sure. oh, modeling something else, but I'm just wondering <laughs> how to put this geometry together. But Sure, uh, absolutely. But yeah, holds true for this too. Cool. Um, yeah, uh, I kind of think we're there. I think this is the level I wanted to get to right here. Uh, and uh, so I think I'm going to call it. There's a lot of little things we could do. We could put in some bracing. We could talk about sheathing, that kind of stuff. But anything else we do is going to go a little longer than I got. So uh, I got to tell you guys a secret. I got to leave here and I got to go outside and help load a truck that is going to 3D base camp. Woo! Vancouver? Are you crossing oh, across the border? On that's the where it's going. Border? It's out of here. So, yeah, I just just one last plug. Well, I guess we could plug it next week too, but that's going to be getting awful close to the event. We are prepping for 3D Base Camp, our biennial user conference. It is in Vancouver. Tickets are still available. You could still get a ticket if you want. Surprising number of people are still buying tickets at this point. I figured like by now, everybody would have a ticket if they wanted it, but we still have people coming in and you could that could be you. If you've been on the fence about it and uh, got the means to go, uh, we are still selling tickets. You could still get there. So 3dbasecamp.sketchup.com. Come check us out. Hang out with us. It'll be fun. Also on that note, next week, Eric will be live modeling, and then we will have no live models for two weeks because our whole crew will be down in base camp working. So this this is not, well, okay, this is work. But uh, yeah, this, this doesn't count as the kind of work we have to do there. But no, we'll be away from the studio. We'll be away from our computers. We'll be face-to-face -face with a whole bunch of awesome SketchUp users. So yeah, one more live model, and then and we're out of here. Yeah. Uh, but for, it's for a good cause. We'll be, uh, that's right. You know, you'll be, if you see us at base camp, Hey, uh, say hi for sure. Let us know you watch from SketchUp live. Uh, cause yeah, all, all the modelers who you've seen on here, uh, will definitely be there. So as will the voices you've heard, Jody and Matt will both be there too. Hello. 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 Yeah. I'll be there. <laughs> Matt, Somebody just so you guys know, Matt does have a body and does not have a soundboard in real life. So <laughs> hey, maybe I have a couple of weeks to get that set up. Maybe That's true. That could be pretty sweet. A little battery powered speaker. And yeah, that could be kind of fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, Bluetooth with some a couple of drops. You got to have at least the save one and. But um, yeah, I could use that with me. That's a big one. Awesome. Well, hey, we will call it now. Uh, did I forget anything? No, I think that's it. All right. So, yeah, join us in Vancouver if you can. If you, again, I'm going to plug again, these SketchUp Essentials, 
Check out these SketchupEssentials.com and the SketchUp Essentials on YouTube. Great way to learn more about SketchUp. Awesome website. Justin Geis is a SketchUp master. Uh, subscribe to him. Check him out. He's a great way to learn SketchUp. With that, I think we can call this. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with us this Friday. Hope you guys have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next week. Take it easy, everybody.